Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Made it through another week. This one went fast, didn't it, this week? Maybe because of the holidays in between, you know? The uh, Veterans Day being yesterday. I hope you had a good time. Hope you flew the flag. You know, I'm having a lot of fun with that flag, as you know, when I put up that flagpole. But uh, what I did was, so I didn't have to take it up and down every night, I bought this solar light kit that comes with two small lights and a, uh, a pretty decent sized solar panel. And it stays on all night long, the lights, and it charges up during the daytime. And uh, it looks nice at night, you know, illuminated, so I don't have to take the flag down. So I'm loving that, having a good time with that. It looks really nice. And a uh, couple things I wanted to talk about. You know, uh, my buddy Ben, you know Ben uh, from Curfee from uh, England, the tool addict, he posted something uh, on Instagram a while ago, a really good post. I saw some guy did his hedges up to look like a railroad. Isn't that cool? Boy, that is a, a nice piece of work. Whoever's doing that hedge trimming, I think that's a very imaginative. Hats off to that. Thanks for posting that, Ben. You know, I'm always interested in uh, some of the viewer projects that's going on because I just find that stuff interesting. And a good friend of mine, Roger McDonald who's been a long-time uh, subscriber, and uh, him, he did a, a great project. His daughter picked up a 1915 kerosene heater, and I have the same one up in the attic. And uh, Roger can rest, restored it and converted it into a LED ambient light, so uh, she can use it in the uh, her apartment and things like that. And it has a uh, LED lights with like six modes. It goes there's 200 lights in there, and they go all different colors and everything. So I just thought that project was outstanding. Really nice project, Roger. Thanks so much for sharing that. That's a great idea. I might do that with my grandmother's Next old. Next up, uh, you know, when I was at the uh, flea market last week. There's always a couple unusual things that get my eye, and uh, and it's sometimes I say, thank God I didn't bring that home, it's just because I don't have no room for it, but you have to see, look at this thing I was looking at, and I'll tell you, I was very close to picking it up, but he wanted $225. It's a turnstile, an old-fashioned turnstile. <laughs> it's self-supporting, it only turned one way. But how cool is that? I said, man, that'd be cool to have sitting in your apartment and every time somebody comes in, it counts them, whatever. Uh, second thing was this, uh, <laughs> look at this Santa Claus that they had there. Now, this Santa, look at the face on this guy. And it was just something about this Santa Claus. It reminded me, you know, years ago when I was a kid, our parents would take us down to sit on Santa's lap or something, you know. And now if you lived near the city, you went to like Macy's or something like that. And they had the good Santas, you know. They had the Santas that were sober and uh, and they were clean and, and they were, you know, probably no arrest records. <laughs> you know, the regular Santas, you know. But for me, you know, living in my neighborhood here in Queens, you know, we, uh, we used to go to Elmont, the Times Square store. You know, they used to have like second rate Santas, you know. They always, you know, kind of had a little smell of booze on them. And when they open, <laughs> their beards were yellow. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you old timers that you might know what I'm talking about. They were like the second rate Santas. You know, they used to pull them out of the, instead of being homeless for a night, they'd sit down and see what the kids wanted. So this Santa, this little Santa reminded me of my old days, you know, going to TSS, Times Square store in Elmont. Yeah. Anyway. It's uh, good times. I almost bought that in by that. Okay, next up, let's get started off with, uh, you remember we did that beautiful cray tool, that CE Bonner cray tool from like 1900s. And, uh, you know, when I was talking about how it operated, but my buddy Carl, Carl Delauder, he said, now that guy's opened a lot of crates in his time and he, he t schooled me on how to open a crate and, and I never knew. So let me show you so we all know. Now, I'll be honest, if I've opened a dozen crates in my life, that's a lot, you know, I, I, you know, but a call, that's what he did. He opened lots of crates. And so he schooled me on how this tool is to be used, because remember, I said, well, how would you get under that nail? And he said, well, let me show you, because this isn't made to get under that nail. This is if you were using it as a crate tool, what you would do is you would get between the the end of the crate here where the uh, the lid meets the. Uh, the side of the crate, okay? You would wedge this tool in between like this, okay? What you would do is you'll get under here like that, and when it gets like that, you would bang this down, okay, until the nails come up like that. When the nails come up like that, you would use this tool to raise up 
the nails just enough that you could get the top, the lid off. And then when the lid comes off, you leave the nails with the, you know, they would be uh, proud and, uh, and flush to the bottom. And then you would leave this like this for when you put the crate lid back onto the crate. So it's, uh, so now this tool makes a lot more sense, you know, uh, it didn't before, but now it does. And I appreciate that call because, and this is how you would store the crates. The nails would be like that. And when you wanted to put something else in that crate, you would take the exact lid, put it back on and nail down, you know, and Bob's your uncle. How great is that? Thanks, Carl. Okay. Uh, next up, I think we're going to try to attempt is, uh, I just felt like doing this little bicycle wrench. Uh, this here, you remember I picked this up uh, not too long ago, and the reason I bought it was because it was the, the worst ever uh, representation of a British-made tool that I have seen. And I've seen some rough castings, especially from King Dick. <laughs> but this might be a King Dick. It is British-made. Um, but you can see here, just look at, look at that. Look at the... I mean, this is just horrid. And even the guys, my buddies from the UK said, please don't even show that's embarrassing. Like, you know, how this ever slipped out. But you know what they say, this might have been done on either a Friday last shift or a Monday first shift, right? Anyway, take a look at it. Let's see if we can't make this into just what it should look like, you know? The only thing is we might, this B308, it's going to be tough because it's raised letters, you know? So it's hard to keep that. You know, because like I was saying, the problem is whenever you try and keep something like that, you know, if you avoid it, the first thing your eye goes to is imperfections in a tool. And that's why, uh, you know, people say, well, you know, why did you take that off? Because, you know, the first thing you're going to look at, you're going to say, oh, it's it, you, you won't notice this is beautiful. You'll say, yeah, but look, he left a little over there. Or there's a couple pits here. That's the first thing you notice. So that's why it bugs. But this is a $2 tool, $2 tool. Maybe a pound and a half in any UK flea market. But over here, I paid, like I said, I paid a lot of money. I think I paid $10 for this. Anyway, so let's do this and do the Brits upright. Now, this is just with the grinder. We did everything with the grinder, okay? And so far, we haven't touched it with anything else, just the grinder. And if you practice enough with the grinder, you can get an acceptable finish. It's very nice, right? But here's where this finish fails. You see all the edges here? Super sharp. I mean, I could scrape my finger. See that? Scraping my fingernail. That's how sharp these edges are. That's why I tell you about the buttery smooth and also blending this in. All these, everything has to be beveled now. And that's where it takes some time, but you have the majority of the tool done. But now comes the fit and finish part. And, uh, you know, we can't really do anything more with this, but let's do it. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this British-made wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. This is more or less just to save face for the guys that were producing these. Maybe it was during the wartime and they had to pump them out. But, you know, and they could have done this, obviously, if they wanted to. But, you know, who had that kind of time back then? But look at this now, huh? What a beautiful, smooth beautiful wrench in, in every way shape and form uh not mirror but um i guess like a satin type just look at the bevels on everything just you know how that feels in your hand with all these you know bevels on everything and you know it works just like it did before you know i, I kept the original screw or even though I, I do like it a bit looser but this is so nice and uh british made as you could see, couldn't keep the lettering down here. It just looked like garbage. And uh, I can engrave it in there. 
Let me know if you think you want to see that engraved. I couldn't engrave anything I want in there. I got a little bit of lubricant coming out there. I used a 50-50 transmission fluid and red grease for the uh, threads and whatnot. But isn't that nice? Isn't that just beautiful? And what a tribute it is to those guys that were pumping these out probably during the war time. And uh, just lovely, huh? Lovely wrench. Love it. British made. Now it's no longer a $3 wrench, right? even on this side. Okay, I think uh, we redeemed ourselves. A little bit of a short one today. I, I went for a, a bicycle ride. I actually subscribe to a, a gentleman in Germany, tools, carriages, and then something in Germany, in German it says, and uh, I'm gonna put a link in the description. He has such great videos. Uh, he makes uh, little um, wooden replicas of uh, wagons and uh, buggies and things like that from the 1800s and uh models and and he just uh he has a great relaxing channel i always enjoy his uploads and he does some bike biking he goes all through germany and i think holland and stuff so i'm going to uh, include a link to his videos check it out i think you'll like it pay him a visit say hello um he, he only has a few subscribers let's uh let's go over there and give him a welcome he's always been a, a subscriber to this channel and uh and also like I said, uh, I was watching his uh, some of his videos, some beautiful scenery in, in Europe that I'll never get to see because he knows the back roads and things like that. And just lovely, you know, really makes you feel like you're there. So I said, I'm going to do, I went for a little bike ride today in, in a park right down the block from me. It's a beautiful park. It's been there, you know, for many, many years before I was born. And, uh, you know, so I enjoy it. And it was a nice day. We had a nice weather. So I'm going to end this video with me riding around the park. Maybe you can enjoy it for a little bit. Then I uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. And I hope you have a uh, good weather. You can get outside and really enjoy it. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.